What's up, guys? My name is Miles. And my name is Fez. And this is The Commodity. And today we are reacting to the history of Indonesia in 12 minutes. I think we've hit just about almost every, if not every country that we talk about. Not Except Singapore. For, yeah, I haven't hit Singapore. And we haven't talked about Vietnam in a while. Uh, so maybe we'll do those we'll, in the future. We, we'll do those in the future if you guys want to check them out. Um, and we still have to finish India. India's got a second part. Yeah. Because it's big. Yeah. So. Or old. Yeah. So let's go ahead and hop into this and check it out and see what it is all about. Today, Indonesia is probably most commonly known around the world for one place. You know what? He Bali. sounds in, like Native American. And American Indian. Spot. So many people view see, Bali is such a known area. You said that you didn't know it was like a big destination spot. Like, I've heard the name Bali, but I'll be 100% honest, I thought they were, that was part of India. Yeah, every time I think Is of, there not Bali in India? I don't know, but every every time I thought of Indonesia in the past, I thought of Bali. Bali as the representation of Indonesia as a whole. But what about the rest of the nation? How did that one island and the rest Obviously, of the we know a lot okay, more. Okay, so there is a Bali town in to India. So, now. obviously, we know a lot more about Indonesia, Indonesia now, but begin. at first, we didn't. Because whenever I heard Bali, I like its neighbor of thought Malaysia, Asia. Indonesia can trace its first sign Maybe because of, of Bali would. All the way back to about 40,000 years ago. Although, there is also archaeological evidence suggesting that 40,000 years may be an underestimate, and other ancestors of today's humans may have been present in the region as long as 1.9 million years ago. Either wow. Way, the earliest reliable evidence of a sophisticated civilization in current day Indonesia dates back to only about 400 BC. With the discoveries of Indian trade goods in the region and inscriptions found in West Java and Eastern Kalimantan, it is also believed that trade with China would have been concurrent with the trade between the Indonesian archipelago and India. Commerce with these particular foreign nations would have also brought the religions of Buddhism and Hinduism to the islands, beginning or contributing to Heavily the outside influence influence by influence Chinese and Indian region. cultures. Jumping ahead to the 7th century, the powerful trade-oriented Sri Vijaya Empire, originating Sri from the Vijaya. island of Sumatra, flourished from the Malay Peninsula down to Java. Despite their remarkable success over so they took on Malaysia and Indonesia. The Buddhist empire of yeah. Sri Vijaya faced its Which I think we kind of covered in the India stuff. Yeah. From India seized their Sumatran territory of Palembang and apprehended their king in 1025. As well as the Malaysian one, I think from it showed it. On, yeah. Sri Vijaya like the northern part yeah. of making Indonesia. The Hindu kingdom of the Mahapahit empire. Mahapahit. Founded in 1292. The Majapahit Empire rose to dominate the modern-day Indonesian region throughout the 13th and 14th centuries, prospering through trade. I'll be honest; I'm not going to remember most of this stuff, like the early yeah, on gotta, stuff. We got to watch Still, these over again just, just to to remember these things. The Majapahit Empire hit a wall and began a rapid downfall. Theirs came after the death of one of their leaders, Gajah Mada, in 1364, and the following death of the king Hayam Wiruk in 1389 like it's cool to know like where everything started yeah. but i feel like things get a lot more interesting once it hits like the early 1900s and up or like mid late 1800s yeah mid, late 1800s yeah leading up to this time the islamic faith found its way to the archipelago and began to really take hold over the ensuing centuries many different lesser known sultanates found success throughout the islands as a result. He's got some Popeye arms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Majapahit Empire. As these kingdoms continued to grow trade in and out of the region, European powers became attracted to the spice market that it offered. Spicy. The first of such nations to arrive in modern day Indonesia were the Portuguese and the Spanish in the 16th century. Like, I understand that spices are like very like used around the world. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how important like to the extreme level that it was back in the back in this time that like, they came from these areas like across the world it wasn't like flying we're gonna go pick up some spices we'll be back tomorrow see you soon yeah no it's like we might die <laughs> but if we don't we have to go across the world real quick to get some pepper yeah we'll, we'll be back but it's just crazy what they would do. Same for, I believe they were still really big in tapestry back then as well. I know they're really big in tapestry now. Is that like tap dancing? 
tapestry i'm just kidding material yeah like cloths cloths yeah luxury while Spain did attempt to exert some dominance in the Maluku Islands, also known as the Spice Islands, their authority in any part of the Indonesian We've heard a lot about the Spice Islands. Short -lived mm -hmm. Due to contesting efforts of Portugal and later the Dutch and British. The Portuguese were initially triumphant in the Malay Peninsula, capturing Malacca in 1511. From there, they aimed their sights towards the Spice Islands beginning their bid to take control of the spice trade in 1512. While they had some levels of success, they were fairly quickly pushed out through the arrival of the Dutch by the 17th century. In terms of the colonial powers, the Dutch were surely the most prominent intruder into the Indonesian islands. The Which is mind-boggling to me. Like, yeah. you don't hear anything about the Netherlands. Right. Under the command of Cornelius de Hootman, and dropped anchor at the shore of West Java. Around this time, the Dutch East In fact, I think they're was peaceful. Like they usually trade between the Dutch don't choose sides and the throughout the Indian Ocean. The Dutch East India Company was given a significant amount of autonomy. Yeah, they were definitely the a, a power player back to then, though. Trade yeah. Throughout the East Indies and keep their competitors, notably the British and Portuguese, at bay. While the original focus of the company was to maintain commercial authority and prosperity, they began to shift their attention as they took control of Java and its neighbors. During the 17th century, the Dutch East India Company made a gradual transition from a leading sea and trading power. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that they had, I, I'm guessing, I'm guessing here, boats. Yeah. Like, because the 16th century, you're talking about the 1500s, like those were still like, I think the British had the, the most, mm -hmm. but if you were a land that actually had boats, that was a huge feat right. back then. So especially ones that could travel that far. Right. That's a huge feat. After centering themselves in the fortified port of Jakarta, Batavia, or modern day Jakarta, Jakarta. Working to gain the more jurisdiction city. throughout the Indonesian islands, the Dutch East India Company was also able to capture Malacca from the adjacent Malay Peninsula in 1641. When the 18th century came around, though, the company began to struggle with corruption, conflict, and a slow collapse into bankruptcy, which resulted in the Dutch government revoking their charter and seizing all of their possessions in 1799. Give me your TV. In 1800, the Dutch East Indies was founded, made up of what would later become Indonesia, but for the time being, served as the new Dutch colonial admission. You know what's funny? Like, we watch all these in 12-minute history videos of these Southeast Asian countries. Like, we'll do, we did the Philippines, and then we got recommended Malaysia. We did Malaysia, and we got recommended Indonesia. Well, India before. But India, but like... They all tie together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it's, it's, it's all pretty connected. much the same history. Yeah, it's all connected. So I do have, actually have one question. So do any of the, like these areas still speak Portuguese? Kind of like uh, uh, Brazil, that was also a Portuguese territory or whatever you want to call it. Um, they still speak Portuguese, obviously. Um, so I'm kind of curious. Do y'all still have Portuguese spoken in regions? Yeah. Administration in the Portuguese. Archipelago. This establishment grew over the 19th and part of the 20th century, although some ups and downs, such as the Javanese War from 1825 to 1830, ending in a Dutch victory, did exist. Also, in 1825, the Dutch captured Palembang, the former territory of the Sriwijaya Empire. During this period, the Dutch also settled disputes and clashes with Akka, Lombok, and Sulawesi. And continued so to they didn't have Malaysia at that point. In the course of or at the least Dutch it doesn't show it. The people of the Indonesian islands were treated vastly unfairly. As Dutch priorities shifted more towards agriculture, the local farmers were mandated to set aside 20% of their own property in order to grow crops for the Dutch to export, such as pepper, sugar, cinnamon, tea, and coffee, and indigo. We've learned about that By in one the of the different videos. Mm -hmm. The colony moved to a free It even showed the same picture. And yeah. began to form private plantations, although the local people were still not truly treated justly. 
Finally, at the very start of the 20th century, the Dutch installed the new system in order to promote the welfare of the archipelago's locals, known simply as the ethical policy. This new program brought about changes such as the construction of new schools in the region, government reforms that allowed more autonomy for the local officials, and the opportunity for some of the indigenous people to become more educated and learn more about the Western world. Even with these improvements though, not every local was impacted. And therefore, many people on the island still felt oppressed by the colonial authority. Over time, these feelings of resentment culminated in nationalist movements and a push for ultimate independence. Unfortunately for the people of the archipelago, the fight for freedom was swiftly interrupted by the intrusion of the Japanese during World War II. At first, the locals were not completely displeased by what they saw as a liberation the same time of Dutch oppressors. Japanese took over Malaysia. Yeah, no, Japanese, Japanese so occupation of the region began. Japanese took over everything. Everything in in that area. Um, I believe that we started coming in because it was basically like the majority of coming in from this side that wasn't from this region was the U.S. because it was because of Pearl Harbor, mm -hmm. and which was the whole reason why we went into World War II in the first place. They were quick to win favor from the Indonesian people, doing so through their use of natives for administrative positions, unlike the Dutch and their willingness to support Indonesian nationalists. The successful strategy was only temporary, though, as the Japanese opted to use the Indonesian islands in whatever form best suited them during the war, which drew some disapproval from a number of locals. Still, the relationship between the Japanese and natives was not horrible, and as the Axis power began to face defeat in the World War, they threw their support even further behind the Indonesian independence movement. During the latter half of 1944, the Japanese declared their goal of creating a self-governed East Indies, which was later confirmed in August of 1945, when Terauchi Hisaichi, commander of Japan's Southern Expeditionary Army I bet it's the Army Philippines group, video that reminds Muhammad me of this Hata one. And Sukarno, two I'm sorry? I bet it's the Philippines video that reminds me of this one because it has all the islands and everything being an ar archipelago. Oh, okay. Yeah, possibly. Indonesian independence movement leaders and informed them that Japan intended to make an immediate transfer of independence. The two nationalist men announced Indonesia's independence, declaring it an independent republic. Once word was out of the Japanese surrender to the Allied forces on August 17, 1945. The proclamation of an independent republic was not quite so simple though and sparked a series of clashes between the Indonesians and the colonizing forces of both the British and Dutch. The British were less compelled to fight back, eventually withdrawing as the Dutch stepped in to try and retake their former possession. After repeated failures, unsuccessful police actions, and growing condemnation from the far west, such as the US, at long last in the final weeks of 1949, the Dutch recognized Indonesia. The following years marked a time of political and constitutional development. Get it, Indonesia. By well, they lost by economic war. ups and downs as well. But it's Indonesia now. Yeah, no, but that's what I'm saying is Indonesia beat them by war, not by like, hey, we're, we're just going to say that you're your own country. Right. Democracy started in February of 1957. The republic then fell into the hands of a dictator, former General Suharto in 1966 before finally returning to a democracy as of 1999. Today, Indonesia is still growing and developing as an independent nation, and an overall population of roughly 273.5 million people in wow. 2020. The Republic of Indonesia is now led by their seventh president, President Joko Widodo of the PDIP, or Indonesian Democratic Party of Struggle. It's interesting name. Seems kind of like a, a negative name. Huh? Seems kind of negative. What, of struggle? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it just doesn't translate the same. Right. No, this was a super informative video. Like I said, it 
it all ties in together and it, it's obviously because all these countries are so close uh, these bigger countries or more powerful countries at the time they had the power to take over all of it right uh, but it's super cool to know that where it started to where it is now all these different countries and and how they tied together how they have a relationship whether they like it or not like they are will. everybody technically you all got like everybody worked together to become their own people yeah and that's awesome so when you say that uh, we're all brothers and sisters, but we argue like brothers and sisters, yeah. it's true. Yeah, you guys are like brothers and sisters. I mean, it it all ties together. Yeah. So did y'all um, during World War II? So it said that Japan declared uh, India or India, sorry, Indonesia as its own country. Did y'all? Oh, so obviously not if. Not very many people are still alive from World War II that can even say that they, like, you know, how the things were going there um, during that time. But do y'all recognize that as like, hey, that's kind of like our first step to independence? Did y'all like actually truly, in, in current time, do y'all still kind of back the Japanese in that situation? Or is it more like... Uh, y'all kind of see in hindsight because they were kind of mistreating them I yeah believe. like they were using them to gain strategic situations right um because obviously a country that completely lost their situation their their war uh you can't really listen to what they have to say you know what right. I'm saying? they like their opinion kind of drops off and mean less now had we said the same thing and we lost the war then it would have been the same concept right so. but anyways uh, let us know if there's any inaccuracies in this video um, we definitely like to hear about it because we've heard that the other one that we've done was extremely inaccurate so mm -hmm. with that being said my name is Miles my name is Fez thanks for watching guys peace out